Call the planning and zoning meeting to order for <coughs> May 21st, 2019. Or, excuse me, May 15th, 2019. Um, let the record show that all commissioners are present. Mr. Hadley, is there any changes to the order of business? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there is not. Thank you. Okay. I look for a motion to approve the order of business as presented. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second. Any further discussion? Hearing no, none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, the second item on the order of business is the minutes from the April 17th meeting. Is there any commissioners that have any changes or concerns with those minutes? <coughs> Not that look for a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. We have a motion to approve by Shirley. Ms. Ducard, any f we have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Kursky, any further discussion on the minute approval? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, item three, or action items for today, we have a Application for a final plat to consider a preliminary final plat for the Sealy First Subdivision, a replat of Lot 2, Block 1, Dvorak First Subdivision in the northwest quarter of Section 8, Township 139, North Range 96 West, and Lot 2, Block 1, Steffens First Subdivision in the northwest quarter of Section 8, Township 139, North Range 96 West, Stark County, North Dakota. Mr. Hadley. Details. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, this, this particular item um, sounds very complicated as you read the legal, um, but the only reason it's really here is we're going to do our irregular plat for it. It's in the southwest corner of town, um, you know, in the ETZ. It basically, um, the county recorder has requirements that won't allow us to do an irregular plat in two separate subdivisions, and this is in two separate subdivisions that he's combining the lots to. Um, his intent, one of the, uh, he has a home on the existing lot and he wants to build a garage. Okay. So pretty simple, it's very long-winded and uh, there haven't been any comments on it uh, from the public, has been noticed um, and you know, I, I do um, feel free to feel a little bad because it has taken him a little longer than it needed to because we didn't get the word from the county recorder until the survey already had it plotted. So I mean, it, um, they have representation here if there's any questions, but um, it's pretty straightforward and staff would recommend approval. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hadley. Anybody in the public regarding this application would like to make a comment? This would be the time. If not, commissioners, step up to the podium to state your name. Morning. My name is Leroy Rickson. Mr. Rickson. I reside at 3729th Avenue Southwest, Kubista Subdivision, uh, uh, Block 1, Lot 2, okay. right across the street from the proposed property. Um, I noticed some materials laying on his lot there, and I went over and I asked him what kind of building he was going to put up, and he said he's going to put up a Quonset. And I mentioned that to some of the residents of the subdivision, and I got the impression that a Quonset is not the most appropriate building to put up in a residential subdivision. I says, I know how I'd feel, I guess, if I uh, look out my front window of my home and have to see a Quonset across the street. So, but I guess I'll leave that up to you people. That's all I have to say, I guess. So. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Rickson? Mr. Rickson, how far are you from? Oh, did you say a block away? No, I'm right across the street. Okay. Mm. Twenty. Twenty. Uh, th uh, 29th. 29th Avenue. Yes. So when he talks a Quonset, is he just talking a steel building? Correct. Round, round steel building. Galvanized. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hadley, was that in his um, report? 
They, there are size dimensions, guidelines, and size requirements. It does need to um, meet those requirements it, as far as the construction of it in the closet. There isn't a requirement that it can't be that. Okay. So I've seen the galvanized material on his property. That's why I asked him. So. No, it's in the no, it's easy. And that, we would not be the building code authority on that either, would we? That's correct. That would be, be the county? It would be Stark County, yep. And I think as far as the, the finish of it, I, as long as it meets the building code, I'm not sure that there's anything we can do yeah, about that's, it here. That's but fine. That's, I just thought I'd bring it up. Yeah, I'm I, a little bit concerned. I have look out my front window of my home and see a Kwanzaa across the street every day. I under, so. Yeah, I understand your concerns. Uh, <laughs> Um, and like I said, as long as he meets the building code, I don't know that we have any options on the finish. I so, mm -hmm. um, I think, Chairman. go ahead. Yes, Mr. Bollinger. Do we know the, uh, the location of the building, the setback? Is there anything, is there a possibility of any trees in front or behind, I guess? Um, we could on this plot require some sort of um, screening on it. We don't have a. We don't typically get a site plan for a plot. So, um, yeah. but we could. We could put a condition on the plot itself that they put some sort of um, screening on it. Now I'm not sure what the house, what siding, and what the house looks like. But the you know it'll have to somewhat complement the house as far as style and what it looks like. But I mean as far as the actual construction and shape of it, it doesn't. We, we just don't have that uh, and I don't think we've we've kind of talked about that before I don't think we really want to have that total control either so it's um, we're kind of in a it does need to kind of fit in with the area typically the finish options and stuff would be handled if there was any covenants there but being there's no covenants and as long as it meets building code I don't think that we we have any control over it here really so oh, excuse me commissioners I'm yeah. Steve Josephson, I'm going to speak as county planner right now. So because this is in the extraterritorial zone, the city still needs to sign off on the zoning. So if there's anything in the city's zoning code, such as saying that an accessory structure has to somewhat match that of the primary structure, they still need to follow whatever the city's code zoning requirements are. So the city will sign, you know, before this goes forward to to the, the county's building official for review, there is a zoning there is a zoning review, and it's it's got to meet whatever is in the city's zoning code. Well, I would <coughs> I would think that would just limit size. Again, I'm not sure if finishes anything in our zoning code. It, well, yeah, it just it, it size, deals with the I'm, I'm sorry, general appearance. Yeah, yeah, general size appearance. and height, size and height, and setbacks would all be and also general general appearances which I think and Mr. Hadley can correct me on this but typically with an accessory structure the city has just asked that it match in some way it doesn't have to precisely match but maybe a similar color um, you know, a similar color so that you don't have a primary structure that's one thing and then an accessory structure that doesn't look anything like that but this will be one of these things when the building co permit comes in you know, I'll bring it over to the city and to review and make sure that you know that it meets that that the building that the that those things meet the zoning, whatever's in the zoning code. Okay. It's not typical that we look at the a site plan or elevations, sure. you know, at a plot. But and you just found you know you found out that it was going in that way, so I guess it. Well, well, I had kind of we'll an address. idea last year. I thought he had already gotten approval because the material was already on his property. Mm -hmm. But then I get this letter. That's why I'm here. So. Oh, okay. Yes, he did say he ordered cool. the material ahead of time. And yeah, and just to be clear, we're not changing the zoning. We're just changing. Right. We're just, it, you know, replotting the property into one lot. So I, I think as long as it fits the zoning, we're, we're kind of restricted as long as he complies with the zoning codes we're going to be kind of restricted so it's whatever you decide mm -hmm. appreciate it any further questions for mr rickson all right 
Thank you, Mr. Rickson. Thank appreciate you for your time. Yeah, thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. Commissioners, any further discussion regarding this replot? Just a question, uh, Commissioner. Um, if he was in here just to replot this and didn't mention anything about the building going on there, he didn't need to mention the building, correct? That's we would probably just prove this is kind of where we're going. That's correct. It'll be covered in the permit process, correct? Right. I mean, sometimes the more information you get, the worse it. Sure. Becomes. Well, I know I wouldn't want a Quonset going yeah. up right across the street either. Galvanized. So. Galvanized. I know we've we've discussed this in the past, Mr. Hadley and me, where we've some commissions have put restrictions on people for screening and trees that they've required for one person building a building and then the next person builds a building and they don't require it. So it's a touch and go. I mean, we I have a hard time exceeding what we already have in our ordinance because it seems like we make one guy, because one neighbor comes in and complains, we make one guy go over the top and put fences up and trees up and then the next guy comes in and does the same thing and we don't require anything. So it's, it's, a, it's one of those touchy situations. So, and we've seen that a few times in the past. So. And it's typically with commercial and industrial that we get into those, those discussions. It, exactly. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. Well, in, the and city, in the city of East, you, we, you know, we tell them you can't put up a shop, you can put an oversized garage. So there's different ways of wording things too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in the city limits we have a little bit more control. I mean, right. I think he would still be mandated by our size requirements unless he would get a variance. And I don't right. know. If and, <coughs> and he has an option. I mean, I, I have no idea how big the, the garage is going to be or wants, he wants to be, but he would go through our process through the building and codes and the board of adjustment for a variance for a if he wanted to be yeah. above the size yeah so and looking at the site already he's already has trees planted on on the lot okay. so i don't know unless we require you know you required mature trees moved in as screening but there's trees on the lot already yeah yeah i see there's some screening there already so right. any other questions concerns before we Take action on this. <coughs> Hearing none, I'd look for a motion. I would make a motion for the approval of final plat for Sealy First Subdivision, FLP 003-19. I move the City of Dickinson Planning and Zoning Commission recommend approval of the final plat for Sealy First Subdivision, FLP 003-19, as depicted in attachment A plat, and meeting all the requirements of the Dickinson Municipal Code and also being in the interest of the public health, safety, and welfare. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Second, any further discussion, commissioners? Comments? Hearing none, I'd look for all those in favor of approving this final plot request, signify by saying aye. No, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, that looks like all the end of all our action items for today. We'll move on to item four on our agenda, which would be our work session items. Item one is a parcel inventory. Planning Director Hadley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm gonna start passing down. Um, here is, the first one is a, <coughs> it's a 11 by 17 version of the maps you see on the wall there. Um, and then the, the second one will be the residential. And um, I asked Daryl, our GIS specialist, to, to come in today because he is actually the guy who does the majority of the work. Um, Stephen and I did some preliminary work um, when we started doing this, and then this gentleman, unfortunately, has to keep track of um, them and then resurrect it and bring it back up and I think he refined it a little bit um, and you know he, he kind of pushed so we get it for this meeting obviously we haven't all read um, you know we haven't all read and studied um, the the report I think you guys all have it um, digitally 
It's a pretty large right here. This big um, report on on the parcels, but I think it's a very useful. I mean, I, I'm glad that we started and had the discussion that we start looking at keeping track of the number of lots. And then Brandy was um, good enough to also um, work with Aaron and IT to come up with the report on kind of just an idea of how many building permits were issued that haven't been finalized that are still out there and then the ones that are in the queue now. So obviously it doesn't take away a lot of that number. We still have quite a few vacant lots and you can see that I think the maps kind of tell just as good a story for the, the public and for us um, in general just to say we have a lot of commercial and residential lots available and you know I, I don't know that we want to facilitate a number of subdivisions coming through to create more and whether that be annexation across the street um, extending services to those it might be a good idea that we look now at, at saying let's fill all of these in well let's try to fill all of these in first so um, if you have any like technical questions on how this is put together and how Daryl can keep track of it um, he was nice enough to come in and, and I bribed him. And <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Mr. Um, why, why are the mobile home lots counted as vacant? Mobile no, mobile home lots. Why are they counted as working vacant? Oh. Um, in, in the case of uh, some of them, the, the lots are there already. They just don't have a mobile home on them. Okay, so you you count it, because I'm looking at the map here, and I see a big orange square, say, on the north side of town. Yeah. So I'm looking, to me, that indicates that you counted the whole area. The ones, the ones that I added, um, I would have either visually inspected the imagery that we had, the latest imagery I could get. In this case, it was the 2018 imagery, <laughs> to just look through the lot and see how many of them were vacant and assign that number to that parcel. So that parcel itself, even though it's a large orange block, is not the whole, you're not counting the whole area as vacant. Right. That okay, just the indication that's where the mobile home is. There's a number of vacancies <coughs> associated with that parcel. Okay. Because I, I noticed that with all our mobile homes, our large mobile home parks on here, there's huge orange blobs. <coughs> right. Um, Only one of them had separate parcels in our existing kind right. of parcel Heartland. features that, yeah. oh. you know. So, so, so south each lot. So. So, Southview must have each lot designated as a parcel. Yeah. Where up north we don't have it that way. And last year we didn't include um, many of the mobile homes in the report. Just for that reason, we we just couldn't get uh, the time, I guess, to get it done to look at it and uh, and uh, get them all in there. There were a few. There were a few lots assigned as vacant by the assessors and we use those and assign something just based on the square footage of the lot but for the other one for the other lots that are established already um, we actually went through and looked at the imagery from 2018 and if they were vacant then they're vacant in this report okay thank you Once again, I think it's a, a, a great tool for all of us to have and, you know, like surely if, if, you know, everyone in your field obviously may not be a bad thing that I'm sure Daryl could print out these, these maps if nothing else um, would be probably helpful, um, you know, for the public if they're looking for vacant lots they can come in and we'll have these displayed at City Hall somewhere. Um, not sure where, I'll keep them in here for a little bit. but. Um, it, I think it's just a good tool for all of us, but also the public, um, just in general. Just see what's out there. See, and, and that way, you know, it gives us kind of a, a guide, too, that, you know, obviously we have commercial. If you look at the commercial one first, um, the, the commercial areas that we have available are pretty well scattered all the way around town. That there are different types and available lots in community commercial, general commercial, um, all throughout town so it, I, I think that you know infill of that is obviously important uh, we want to infill more of our commercial the residential um, 
you know, it, subtracting the mobile home portions of it, if you look at the, or the light orange and the yellow, um, you know, those are all areas that are pretty well scattered around town as well, and we have a number of those areas that <laughs> it would be great to fill those in because we already have the infrastructure there to serve them. So it, it doesn't cost us or citizens anymore either to maintain more and, and improve more infrastructure. That's not saying that we wouldn't entertain a subdivision, obviously, um, from someone, but, you know, if, if whether it's surely I'll use you as an example again, if you're talking to someone and they want to do, they want to build 22 houses um, in Dickinson, um, you could easily point to a place where they could get 22 lots, I guess, is, is where I'm coming from. And I think that's what we should promote as well. Um, if, if people ask, where should we develop, um, this is a good indicator on where development should happen in town right now. And it's easy. It's easy development. It's not, you don't have to build roads and sewer and water and whatnot. It's, it's much easier than doing, starting over. Anyway, um, I would say if you'd like to decipher through that, um, if you have any questions as you go through that, it's a lot of information. I mean, it's a lot of information that we have. And bear in mind, it is a snapshot. I mean, next time we meet, this will be dated. Um, you know, but it, it does serve a purpose, and I think maybe late spring every year would be a good time to do it, just because that's when things start rolling a little more. Um, and it's a good snapshot every year of where we are and what's been, what's been going on. So just wanted to get that to you. We said we were going to, and um, I thank Daryl and Brandy um, for helping putting it together. Is it, it's a, a little bit of a project. I mean, Daryl had quite the project to, uh, he had to deal with Stephen and I and um, counting lots and looking at areas last year. He doesn't hate us yet, so that's good. The assessor's information doesn't come across and it's not a perfect portrait of everything that's vacant, even though it gives us the bulk of everything that's vacant. They have different classifications for things than what we're interested in. Um, for example, apartments are considered commercial. For this purpose, we think of them as residential vacancies. Um, and so they're classified differently in their database. It's not just the easy kind of full across. You have to finagle the data a little bit each time to do it and get what we're trying to get out of it. I do have one question. How many of these are city-owned lots? Um, you know, I don't know offhand. <coughs> I could find that out. But, um, but that was one of the questions the realtors had. I mean, we know we can buy them from the city. I don't we're know we're that they classify the cities as vacant when they're empty. All of the cities may be classified as exempt. Except <coughs> so we may not be pulling them. But I imagine there could be one or two that are classified as vacant because I'm not exactly sure when they switch things over. I think for like the lots we're building on and stuff, they may switch them from vacant when they get a permit. So at the time they get the permit, I think they're no longer vacant you know, to start building. Surely, for example, the property we own by the middle school, it's not listed as anything on either map. Yeah, and. And the other thing is, these things are limited to vacancies that are within named subdivisions. We are not recording vacancies that are in auditor's plats or unsubdivided you know, areas. And there are about 30 some of those. Um, and they're generally bigger parcels that more likely will be broken down. So on top of having to be platted before they could actually be built on, they'd also uh, just take more time, not, not as ready as we see these to be. So for example, the 1,452 residential lots, those are all got infra infrastructure on them, ready to go? Um, uh, yeah, I think most of the ones in this report have some infrastructure, but there may be some level Cs and level Ds and the level B's have at least one of the water, sewer, or street infrastructure. The level A's have all three within 100 feet 
and the level C's are platted but have none. Thank you. That brings up. And we picked the 100 feet just out of the air because it sort of accounts for the road right away and most places we're interested in and you don't want to start picking something where they might develop it, you know, because they could run 300 feet or something like that. But, so we just, it's, that's an arbitrary figure on my part. <laughs> you got to pick some distance. That brings up my question, Mr. Hadley. What is the, is there still any interest in de-annexation of any of this property? Well, there, there was discussion on the Sundance Village, um, you know, and that, if you look at the residential one, it's up by Sundance Cove. It's not actually colored in. Um, it had a planned unit development, and that has expired, and it hasn't been subdivided. So it is just one big piece of property. So technically, if we were going to list it on this as a, a vacant lot, it would be a one. It would be sure. one lot. So um, Pinecrest on the other side of town, um, north of Westridge, um, it, same same scenario. Some of those lots um, have been platted. They're zoned agricultural, and there's a few homes and things built on them. But they had a PUD as well. They we would entertain obviously those platted lots to come in and obtain zoning. Um, in that area, I think they were projected to be commercial, kind of north of uh, Cornerstone Bank in that area. Um, the gentleman that is getting the property back um, has discussed de-annexing um, north of the farmstead there, um, and we, we used to, it was going to be a mobile home court as well. Um, so north of north of the water tower there, um, he hasn't move forward on that. So I mean really if we're going to assign a, a density to those it would have been one on the on the north part of the whole manufactured home park and then there is a, a residence on the south um, and we probably have two or three com potential commercial things but they're not commercial yet at this point so um, we just basically have avoided those. Um, just because they're planning or developments that really haven't gone anywhere, and um, there's really no um, there's no indication that the owner is going to come back to town to do that because we're also working with them on Sundance Cove to come back in and do they want to do a condo plat for all the multifamily out there, and before they do that, I'm asking them to put street lights in, form their HOA, and fix the roads. So I'm not quite sure that that's going to happen, um, but um, I, I doubt very seriously they're going to come back in and do Pinecrest or Sundance Village. I, I think they have some financial trouble. So, so that was kind of a judgment call. And then there's one other area, 5th Street Southwest to 8th Street Southwest in that whole corner there, I think. Um, that was supposed to be apartment buildings and then they had like two years to build and if they didn't it was supposed to resort back to residential. Mm -hmm. What's happening on that one? N nothing that I know of. Um, it's, uh, I, I haven't heard a word since I've been here so on that property. So, so did they, do that zoning revert then? It's, I don't think, Stephen do you remember that one? I don't know if it's existing. Uh, I think it was a PUD as well. Oh boy, I don't recall. I'm sorry, I don't recall that one. So, where where is it at? From Fifth Street Southwest, along State Avenue, oh, all the way to Eighth Street Southwest. Uh, Shirley, are you talking about the Corner, that whole that whole hill they leveled? Yep. The Riddle Hill. The Riddle Hill. Because it was it was I know I was a commissioner. Yeah, big hill. That was for after two years. They had two years. Of it's it's listed on here as PUD. Yeah. If you look at the map, so <coughs> um, I don't know. But it's also probably expired at this point. So. I think you know with that particular one is a little different scenario than the others, in that we would be probably a little more excited about that developing because there actually is some infrastructure that's been put in there. Um, 
So, and, I, and it's actually a, a pretty good area to be developed, probably not as multifamily, um, probably a single family. So, um, once again, that one's kind of a, it's floating. And no one's really, no one said a word on that. That's probably one of the main, only larger projects that no one has said a word on since I've been here. So. Commissioners, anything else? Hearing none, move on. No other comments? Our next work session item would be item two, and is the separation of the Urban Forestry Committee from this Planning Commission. Mr. Hadley. Yeah, I think we, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, we discussed this briefly, and I don't know that everybody was on board, and I'm glad Mr. <coughs> Goss here, because he can jump in and, and add his comments as well. Um, I, I think where we're going with this, thank you. Thank you. I think where we're going with this is um, Vern's going to set up a urban forestry board. Um, they're going to report back to you quarterly, and it's going to funnel through the planning commission, and then any recommendations will then go to the city commission based on your input from the working board's um, suggestions in the urban forest, in the urban forestry. Is that correct, Mr. Go? Okay. Um, so. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure everybody was clear on that. Um, you know, you guys, at least most of you that were here then, you, know, you kind of shook your head and said, just said, yes, I'll do it. Uh, probably reluctantly, um, a number of years ago when we did it. And once again, we thank you for it. Um, you'll still be involved. And it is a good place for it because, I mean, dealing with some of the urban forestry issues and um, whether it be park um, areas with the park board um, or you know, just developments if they want to do things. This probably is a great place to talk about that. Um, and it's a great place for the urban forestry people to come in and feed into because they not necessarily will deal with the, the city commission directly at any point in time. So you're, you're kind of the buffer between, between them and, and the commission. So just wanted to make sure everybody was clear on that. And if there's any questions or concerns or comments on that, we're trying to make it as as workable as we possibly can. He does seem to have a pretty good active, potentially active group but he's kind of contacted and they're kind of more on the ground um, going, going and doing. Um, you would be more kind of the review as you have been, review and reaffirm a recommendation to the city commission if there was something we were doing. So, Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hadley. Uh, next item would be item five. Items not on the agenda that anybody on the commission here would like to bring up. I'll bring up one. Well, Mr. Hadley. Um, the subdivision ordinance, we discussed it last month and we haven't forgot. Um, uh, we're waiting till Mr. Kuvis um, can provide the input on the bonding and then we will we will bring that back to you. That seemed to be, is there, was there any other concerns in the time frame from the last meeting till now on any other part of the ordinance that you might have noticed that we could, if we need to address or? I know that was my concern, more of the bonding and the percentage. But if there is, please shoot me an email or shoot Brandy an email um, and we'll at least address it before the next meeting. Our, our goal is to kind of get this once we get that part of it figured out, get this done. Okay. So. All right. Anybody else have anything on that area? Okay, we'll go to item six then. Uh, public issues of city concern not on the agenda. If there's anyone here that has any concerns they would like to bring forward, this is the time. Doesn't look like we have anybody here, so we'll let's move on from that one. Item seven, motion to adjourn. Chairman, I move to adjourn. We have a motion and a second. We are adjourned.